Hi there, welcome back to my Hacker Rank series. So on the left, I've got the Hacker Rank dashboard. On the right, I've got this little Jupyter notebook to help us get through this problem as easy as possible. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit solve challenge, and this one is about lists. We've got the task to the left of the screen, and this is where we will do the coding. Let's read the task really carefully. Consider a list, which is an empty list in the beginning. You can perform the following commands. So we'll, we're gonna be sending commands to the machine. One, the type of command. Insert at position i integer e. I will tell you what that means. So this is one type of command I can send to the machine. Two, I can print the list. I can remove one uh, occurrence of an integer from the list. For example, if the list has got one, five, 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 nine, I can say delete the first five that you come across. So I can remove that. I can append a new number. I can say now append number 25 to the list because I want it to be there. I can sort the list if I want it. I can pop the last element. If you don't know what pop does, it essentially looks at a list, doesn't care how big the list is, just gets rid of the last one and you can store it in a new variable. That's I'll show you what that means. And you can actually also reverse the list. So you can um, order it in the reverse order. Let's go on. Initialize your list and read in the value of n followed by n lines of commands where each command will be one of the seven, seven types listed above. So we essentially want to ask the user to tell us how many different commands they wanna give us. Do they wanna say, I want three prints and two removes and one append, which will be six commands, then n will be six. Iterate through each command. So I will need a for loop. Let's write that there. Uh, this is not really the best practice, but I just want to remember that I need a for loop and perform the corresponding operation on your list. For example, if the user says n4, they will say one append, another append, one insert, and print. So they have four commands for me. Let's quickly look at the example that is given down below, then I'm gonna go back to coding. This user wants to do 12 commands. I'm gonna make note of them. Number one is insert zero and five. So let's make an empty list. This is command number one. My list dot insert. What do they wanna insert? They wanna insert number five at index zero. So index zero and number five. Then they wanna do another, they wanna do two more inserts. So this, I'm just gonna copy um, twice. So their second insert is one and 10. And their third one is zero and six. What I wanna do next is to print. So let's print my list. You will see that I've got six, five, 10. And that's the first output here, six, five, 10. You know, this was command two, and this was command three, and this last one was command four. So I'm not gonna do all of that. I just wanted to show you what type of output are we expecting. All right, so we will receive how many different types of commands the user wants to send us, okay? Then let's make an empty list as we need it because we, we need a container to start putting stuff in it. Then once we have that empty container, we want to loop over the number of different commands. How do we do that? So let's call it iteration because iteration is not a keyword for Python. So for iteration in range of n, so I want to say for the number of times that the user said, continue doing this action. Now, what am I going to do? Well, every time that the user wants to send something, some information, I need to receive it. Let's say user input will be what the user sends through the input function. And then I want to split it. Why did I do this? Let me just copy this and paste it in my Jupyter notebook. Look at this. If I run this, the user says, I want to insert one and five. And if I look at user inputs now, you will see that that very nicely, I typed one line, but it cuts them into separate words or numbers by space because there was one space here, there was another space here. So now it says, okay, there are three elements. That is great, I need that. 
So I need to split the user's command into separate bodies. I'm going to say, let's start with um, the insert. I'm going to say if user input, oops, number zero. Why did I go with user input number zero? Because look at that. If I say user input number zero, you will see that that's the first one. I want to see if the user wants to insert. So if this one equals insert, then what I want you to do is take my list and insert to it. Well, what am I inserting? If you remember, we said that this is the index and this is the value. So I want you to insert user input index one, because that's the index, which is this one, uh, number one. And then what is the value is actually user input index two. This will do the index job. The other one is if I go up, so we did the insert, let's probably do print, we can do the print if you want. If, again, let's copy this. And I want to just copy this into print. If user input is print, all you need to do is just print my list. That's very easy. Elif, what is the next one is remove. So let's copy this. Paste it here. If the user input is remove, what I want you to do is go to my list and remove the integer of user input that sits in the index. So I want you to go to that specific index and remove the value there. Because look at here, uh, let's look at my list again. This is my list. So if I wanted to remove number five, uh, all I have to do is say my list, use the remove method, and I want you to remove my list index one because six is index zero, five is index one. And once done that, if I print my list, you will see that number five is gone. So this is what it's doing. Next one, I want to do so I did the remove, I want to do the append. So if you find that the user wants to do append, all you need to do is to go and call my list, and then call append method, convert the user input sitting at index one into an integer and append it here. So what it means means that for example, when the user says append one, cut these two pieces, so you will have one append and one number one, and then you will append number one onto the list. That's easy. Now, Elif, what's the next condition? We did append, let's do the sort. If the user input says sort, let's change this to sort, all you need to do is just take my list and sort it. That's very straightforward. And pop, let's copy all this line to make my life easier. If the user says pop, Again, all you need to do is go to my list and pop like that. What do we have left and reverse and elif user input at index zero is reverse. All you need to do is do my list dot reverse. I hope you understand what is going on. If not, leave your questions in the comments and I'm more than happy to take you through um, a deeper explanation. Let's run this code and see if it works. So the reason it didn't run is because when the user input comes in, it comes as a string. So you look at here, this number one is a string. I need to convert it like, like integer like down here because I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna add integer to this and then integer to this one. Let's run it again. Great, it worked. Let's submit the code. Brilliant, we fixed it. So um, I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel and leave any questions down in the comments. I'm more than happy to help you. Thanks a lot. See you soon.